Digital interactive notebooks. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I've been doing digital interactive notebooks for about three or four years now. And before that, I did the traditional take it home in the wagon kind of notebook. And I can tell you that switching to digital has been a game changer for me, um, especially during distance learning. I don't know how I could have done distance learning without already having these practices in place and lessons created for digital interactive notebooks. And I kind of felt like because it was such a game changer for me, I should share some of these things with people. So let me know in the comments if you, um, if it's helpful, if you like it, what you wish I would talk about. Some of the things I'm going to be talking about related to the digital interactive notebooks in this ins and outs is check-ins, text, uh, vocabulary, anchor charts, maps, and differentiation. And that is a big one. But I'm going to talk about each one of those things separately because otherwise it'd be a very long video. Today I'm going to talk about check-ins. And it's not what you think. So stick around. It's not just a social emotional learning thing. But the big kind of overarching idea of all this stuff that I want to share is what can you do now that you could not do before? Because there is a whole lot out there that digital interactive notebooks can do that paper notebooks cannot do. So let's get into it. First of all, check-ins, social emotional learning. Yes, that's important and that's great. Why do I have social emotional learning check-ins in my digital notebooks? Well, because sometimes I use them, my note, they, I make them in slides. So sometimes I use them to teach a whole class lesson using Pear Deck or Nearpod. I'm kind of a Nearpod person, but they're both basically the same. Um, but yeah, so I will do like a social emotional check-in at the beginning of the lesson. I'm going to show you some examples of some of the ones that I've used and liked. Um, also to check for understanding like in the middle of the lesson or at the end of the lesson. And then, so sometimes at the beginning, I will do a prior knowledge check-in and that is a good one to do because it lets me know how much the students already know. Do I need to pre-teach some concepts or vocabulary before we get into this? What are they going to struggle with? So I know that I need to really explain that in detail when we go over it. It's a good check-in to do. And finally, the big one is a work completion check-in. I have not seen anybody else doing these, but there's probably people out, here, out there who have shared stuff like this, but stick around for that one because it might be the best thing I did in my notebooks. So let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about all these things. Social emotional learning. So here's one that I like. It's a rosebud thorn and I did not make up that idea. It came from somewhere. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, basic check-in. This one I did not use with students, but I just wanted to throw it in there because I've seen a lot of these like grumpy cat type ones or whatever. I actually did this one for a staff training. I did not use it with students, but I thought it was funny. Then we had vibe check check-in. Um, how do you feel today with the emojis? I've seen a lot of different versions of these. This one I like a whole lot better than those other ones. And this one I did make up. So this was, we did a lot of um, mindfulness lessons in my class and like daily. So this kind of came out of that teaching and it was a check-in for their body, their mind, their heart. And when I would do this in Nearpod, I would not have it on the screen where everybody could see everybody's responses. So students could share something with me privately that maybe they wouldn't be comfortable walking up and telling me. Maybe they couldn't walk up and tell me because we were in distance learning. Um, but they can like let me know that and then check just the teacher. Or maybe they have something great that they want to share with the whole class and they can write that in there and let me know the whole class and then I'll give them some time before we start. Hey, so-and-so wants to talk about this birthday party that they have this weekend. Um, 
great check-in, one of my favorites. The prior knowledge check-in. So there's a couple that I do for this. Um, one of them is just your basic KWL. What do I know? What did I, what questions do I have? What did I learn? I think everybody knows this one. It's been around forever because it's good. Um, another one I do is a knowledge rating, which I think is also pretty common. And for that one, it's a vocabulary thing. So I put some terms. I use this more in history. I'll put some terms in that word bank that are vocabulary terms for the chapter we're about to read. And then I've had students do this a couple of different ways. Sometimes they write the words in the boxes. Um, we've done it in Jamboard and we've done it in Nearpod. And in both of those, sometimes students, it's really interesting to give less directions and see how students create their responses. Because then you get like impressed by some of the interesting ways that kids come up with. So I had some kids mark a color in each box. So I've never seen this word and they marked it red. And then they went through my word bank and circled words in red which is not what I intended, but worked just fine. So sometimes it's cool to leave the directions a little bit kind of open so kids can, you can see a bunch of different strategies and the kids enjoy seeing all the different ways. And then they see somebody else did something and, ooh, I like that. So then the next time you see more people doing that. Um, and then you have the check-in for, are they getting it? So sometime at a midway point, maybe after you've just gone over something a little bit challenging, do a, a check for understanding. This was one I did. I tried to be very clever with my check-ins during distance learning so that the kids would be interested. Um, on a scale of one to Patrick, how confused are you? And this is another one that's, you know, basic. They could put, post, sometimes we would have this on like a jam board and then they would put their post-it notes under help. Questions that they have, they put under questions. Totally got it. They put their name there. And then we're gonna talk about the assignment check-in. So I have two different versions of this that we had done. And uh, I put this in a jam board, as you can see on the screen. And I put all the assignments that were due for the week. So this is something we would do on a Friday. This is our Friday check-in. Because during distance learning, um, it was kind of a problem for students to have a lot of missing assignments. So this check-in kind of helped keep track of all that. Because you can download the whole Jamboard as a PDF. And so then every Friday you have, what did everybody say? which is super helpful when you have a student later say that they did an assignment and then you can show them the Jamboard from that week where they actually didn't do it. Um, but it's also good because you'll notice at the bottom there's a box that explains. So are they gonna turn it in today? A lot of kids didn't have that chapter five lesson one quiz done because it was an assignment for that day. So they put it there, I'm gonna turn it in today. Um, is it gonna be turned in late? give me a date that you're gonna have it done by. So they're setting a goal there. And then I can see this and give them reminders about it as well. Um, I need more help. And I'm gonna attend small groups on this date. So that's an important thing to have in there. Maybe it's not done because they didn't know how to do it and they need some extra help. And this kind of gives them that opportunity to schedule something with me. And then the final one, and yes, kids did check this box. I'm not going to do it. You know, okay, <laughs> that's fine too. But I do have a record of that then when someone is upset because they have this grade and it's not what they want. But then, you know, we have all these Friday check-ins of all your work is not done and you're not going to do it. So, you know, it's just, it's good to have all your bases covered <laughs> for those meetings that come up. Um, let's take a look at the other check-in. So in addition to digital interactive notebooks, we also did digital portfolios. And I'm telling you those two things together, a win-win, like best thing I was doing. Um, and so sometimes if they had a portfolio or website assignment, 
to be turned in. Those usually happened on a Friday because at the end of the week, we've done all these assignments. Hey, this one was something I'd like you to put on your portfolio. Um, and you'll notice I have steps here. So complete the portfolio assignment and they're numbered so kids can find them. And all those assignments are in a slide deck all by themselves. So students can find assignments that they're missing easily. Um, but then they choose, so we had the breakout rooms, but you could still use this without having breakout rooms. Um, which room would they need to be in? And this kind of lets me know who's got their work done, who wants me to check their website. Because when you have like a whole bunch of kids saying, check mine, check mine, check mine, and you go to a couple of kids, you forget who needs to be checked next, right? So um, I have a room for people who didn't do the assignment, so they can't put anything on their website because they didn't do the work yet. So we had this flex day. Hey, get that work done because it needs to go on your website. And then the other room was for people who had it done and now they're writing their post for the website. Um, then we have, I think I'm done, can you check? So that's for people who have all their work done, but they want me to take a look at it beforehand. Like before we get to official grading, can you take a look at it first? And then we have a final room, I'm done, give me some fun. And that's for kids who have it all done everything is good, they need something fun to do. Um, and then I always have this main room where, hey, I wanna be here where Miss Marshall is, and that's fine too. That way they're kind of there with me all the time. A lot of kids who are like, oh, those kids who are just kind of lacking in that self-confidence and they just always wanna be around the teacher, that's where they go. Um, so anyways, that's the flex day assignment check-in. And uh, another thing that I want to point out is that, so our school had a focus on implementing universal design for learning, also called UDL. And these are some of the, some of the um, criteria for executive functions that doing these last type two type of check-ins can help with. So they're doing some goal setting because in that first one, they're saying, when they're going to turn that late work in. Um, it's supporting planning and strategy development. So letting them know that, hey, I, can, I don't have this turned in. I need some extra help with it. Um, and then really enhancing their capacity for monitoring progress. And that's a big one. It kind of gives students a little bit more ownership in their learning and getting their assignments turned in and keeping track of things and getting help. So um, I will talk about digital portfolios in a separate thing, but for now, that's all I'm gonna go over with. I wanna keep these videos kind of short. Let me know in the comments if it's helpful, if there's stuff you want me to talk about that I didn't talk about, if you have questions about anything, because that lets me know, should I make more videos or, is this not helpful and nobody's watching? Thanks for watching.